Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Red Bull Ring. We are getting ready to go for day two of round eight of the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine. Qualifying two is already getting underway. The drivers in Group B are out on circuit, a dry track, just like we had in qualifying yesterday. Not like we had for the race, though. If you missed it, you missed perhaps the best race we may have ever had this championship championship has ever seen a, a fantastic race the first race ever in the championship where we had pit stops uh, during the race it was an absolute cracker my name's Chris McCarthy it is a pleasure as always to be here to call you through the action here you can see cars out on track for those of you new to the championship, let's go through the format for qualifying. For those of you who are joining us all the time, a welcome back. Let's quickly remind you how it works. The drivers are split into two groups for qualifying. Group A is for the drivers, first, third, fifth in the championship, and so on. And Group B, the four drivers, second, fourth, sixth in the championship, and so on. Those groups are formed before the weekend is started. They remain like that throughout the weekend. Now, yesterday, Group B went out on circuit first. So today, uh, Group... Yesterday, sorry, Group A went out on circuit first. So today, Group B will go out on circuit first. The quickest group at the end of qualifying will form the inside row of the grid for the race coming up later. And the slower group will form the outside row of the grid. It's as simple as that. Now, yesterday, the quicker group were the first group to go out on track. It was Group A. Paul Aron was quickest with a 126.737. The quickest driver in this group, Group B, was Dudu Barrichello in the number 91. He did a 127.044, managed to get fifth place in the race. The result from yesterday, Kaz Habercourt drove through from 14th on the grid. Yes, 14th on the grid to storm through and win the race. Did it right towards the end of the race. We had a safety car towards the end and Kaz Havercourt charged through the field and won by two and a half seconds ahead of his Van Amersfoort teammate, Josh Dufek. It was a one-two for the Van Amersfoort team and they took both the overall win and the rookie win as well with Josh Dufek. It was Josh's first rookie win and his first podium, a second win for Kaz off the back uh, of the win he got at Hungary. Pierre-Louis Chauvet uh, also got on the podium in what was a, a record-breaking day, got the first podium uh, for himself uh, on what was his very first race in the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine, uh, and uh, a fantastic result for the RPM team were brand new to the championship this year. A well done uh, to him. He did have the lead going into the latter stages of the race. Championship leader Dino Biganovic extended his lead uh, out front. Dudu Barrichello finished in fifth ahead uh, of his Arden teammate, Joshua Dirksen, in sixth place. He put in a brilliant performance to come from 15th on the grid to sixth. Uh, the man we watched there, Gabrielli Mini, just said he struggled a little bit with the setup on the car, said they maybe didn't get the pressures right. Uh, he finished in seventh place. Uh, Lawrence Van Hopen managed, uh, matched his best results of the season with an eighth place. That's the third time he's finished there this season. Then we had Lorenzo Flutza in ninth place, back in the points once again. Says it was one of the uh, most fun races he's ever had, actually. He said it was just so tricky. There he is in the number 16, actually. Uh, he said it was such a tricky race and such a fun race because every corner you were on the team to the radio saying, shall we pitch, shall we not? Uh, and he said it was uh, you know, a hugely challenging race, but uh, uh, also yeah, hugely fun as a driver uh, as well. And he thinks they just made the right decision in the end to stay on those wet tyres. Uh, and Mary Boyer finished in 10th place due to the fact that Sebastian Montoya uh, was given a penalty. It wasn't for the incident he had with Paul Aron. Uh, it was due to something that happened in the pit lane uh, under the red flag. The team moved the car in the pit lane under red flag conditions. And as such, he was given a 25-second penalty. Sadly, we will not have Teresa uh, Babachkova racing today. Here's Leonardo Fornaroli. Uh, here is Owen Tangavelu.
just running a little bit wide. Uh, Teresa Babich-Koba had a crash with her teammate, uh, Gillian Henryon, coming through the first corner in what was very treacherous uh, conditions. Uh, she was taken to the medical center uh, after the race, uh, and her and the G4 racing team have taken the decision uh, that it is best for her not to compete today, and we wish her uh, all the best and I do hope that she's back with us again at some point, and I hope she is OK to take part in a FIA Formula 3 test, which is coming up uh, at Magni Corps a little bit later this month. There's Gabrielli Mini. was a little bit disappointed uh, that he wasn't able to uh, improve his championship charge yesterday. But a brand new day today. Let's see uh, what he can do. He finished third in this group yesterday. Quickest time, as I said, was a 127.044. Currently, we're on a 129.426. I'll tell you what, one driver to watch today could be Sami Megatunif in the number 17. He started 36th place and finished in 11th. He gained 25 places in the race, and that is a new record. That's the most places anyone has ever gained in a race in Freca. And there we see Gabrielli Mini running wide, going down towards turn number three, and that is this lap ruined completely as he looks in the mirrors. Plenty of time still to go in this session, though. Track limits is going to come uh, into play. If you didn't watch qualifying yesterday, uh, there are three corners where we are monitoring track limits. Those are turns one, nine, and ten. I'll run you through what the score is when we get to them. Turn one, if you run over the sausage curb, all four wheels, then your lap time will be deleted. As we come up towards turns nine and ten now, they are the final two corners. Watching Dudu Barrichello, if you run all four wheels over the red uh, and white runoff curb, there you can see it to the right-hand side of screen. If you go all four wheels over that there, uh, then your lap time will be deleted. If you do it here through turn ten, then this lap time will be deleted, and the next lap time will be deleted as well. Dudu Barrichello didn't do that, though. That was a perfect example how you should do it, and that was a perfect lap as well. 126.7. 0.796, fantastic stuff. Dudu Barrichello absolutely flying out there this morning, as is Joshua Dirksen. He's gone P2, no Leon is P3. It's an Arden Motorsport 1, 2, 3 so far, but Leonardo Fornaroli has just spoiled the party. He's gone to P4. Sami Megatunif has gone to P3. Owen Tangavelu is up to P6. Hadri and David next. Piotr Wisnik is next, and it's Nicola Marinangeli from Monolite Racing in ninth. Fluxep is in 10th place. Bortoletto, who said he made a mistake on his best lap in qualifying. One to watch perhaps today, he's in P11. Braski is 12th. Zagazetta, who turned 19 on Thursday, he's in 13th. Masson in 14th. Ogard on his debut weekend is 15th. Likewise, Gillian Henry on subbing in for Axel Nost, he's 16th. Then it's Mini, yet to see him do a lap after that mistake. Braski is next. Going quickest on this lap, Owen Tangavelu. Absolutely flying, but so is Dudu Barrichello. In the top five in the last three races, a podium back at Spa as well. The first time he ever took one, he qualified on the front row yesterday, just about staying within track limits there. Dudu Barrichello pushing very, very hard here as he chases down his teammate Joshua Dirksen. Dirksen goes to provisional pole. Dudu Barrichello takes it back from him. 126.654. Dudu Barrichello leaving the way by seven thousandths of a second. Hardly anything to split between them, but here comes Owen Tangavelu. Can he go to provisional pole position? Yes, he does. Tangavelu goes to the top. What a dream weekend this is turning into for the RPM team. 126.430 for Owen Tangavelu. Joshua Dirksen going even quicker now on this lap. Noel Leon is improving as well. Watch out for the Arden driver down in ninth place. He's a Red Bull junior as well, so we'll consider this a home race for him as we don't travel over to Mexico. But I tell you what, every driver out there is improving. Sammy Megatune, if the only driver I think that isn't improving, the timing screens are absolutely on fire, and so is Owen Tangavelu. We're watching him down towards turn number four, 21.8 through the first sector. I don't think we've seen that all weekend as he makes his way now round turn five in towards turn number six. 
the rookie driver. Oh, no, a bit of a lock up there, but I think just about recovers it. Owen Tangavelu pushing to the absolute limit here as he makes his way through turn number seven. The man who raced in French F4 last year, jumping up to Frecker this year, moving across to the RPM team in the last couple of rounds. And now, since then, has been in the top ten three times. He makes his way in towards the final corner. Owen Tangavelu lost three tenths, unfortunately, with that lockup. As Gabriel Portoletto goes to provisional pole position, 126.414. Well, Gabriel Portoletto promised me that I'd be shouting his name this morning. And he's proving me right. Gabriel Portoletto, provisional pole position, 126.414 for him. 16 thousandths of a second quicker than Tangavelu, who we see charging past our camera there. There's less than a tenth of a second between the top four. It's Portoletto, Tangavelu, Barrichello, David. Then just over a tenth and a half back is Dirksen. Fornaroli is next, Megatuna is next, Leon is next, Baptiste is next, Fluxa is next. Improving on this lap, Tangavelu has just gone quickest through the first sector. We've also got Barrichello improving. We've also got David improving as well. Also improving is Fornaroli. Keep an eye on him. A little bit further down the field, uh, Nico Baptiste has just put in a good first sector. Currently runs in P10, but Dudu Barrichello looks set to potentially take that provisional pole position back. Bortoletto didn't do the best of first sectors, has done a pretty decent second sector, though. Right, Dudu Barrichello, over to him first. He comes across the line, he goes to provisional pole position. Joshua Dirksen is next to cross the line. Can he improve? He stays in fifth place. Noel Leon came across the line. I don't think he's improved. He stays in ninth place. Hatchery and David goes to provisional pole position. 126.076. Hadrian and David goes to third place. Time's absolutely tumbling. Gabriel Fortaletto didn't improve on that last lap. Fornaroli did, he's sixth place. Megatunip did, he's seventh place. Mini only eighth place currently. We're in to the final three minutes, well into the final three minutes, almost into the final two. Oh dear, Gabriele Mini, that's why he's in eighth place. Bit of a lock up, that's the second time we've seen him lock up down at turn three. However, Gabriele Mini, this could be his lap. 21.9 through the first sector, 38.8 through the second sector. That's very, very good for Gabriele Mini. I'm going to look out the window for him. I think he might improve. That might have been him going past up towards the line now. There he goes. Yes, fifth place for Gabriele Mini. So he's climbing up the order and he's going to have at least two more chances to try and improve on that. He did the best last sector. However, Owen Tangavelu is quickest out there through the first sector. This is a real, real fight, isn't it, on track? Hadrian David is lining himself up for a quick last lap. He won't improve on this lap. He slowed down on this lap. Dirksen comes across the line. He's currently P6. He goes to P5 as they make their way down the star finish straight. Hard to know where to look, isn't it? Tangavelu, though, we're watching him on screen. He makes his way up to the line, quickest through the first sector, one of the quickest through the second sector as well. Can't improve overall in his position, but does improve his lap time. 126.093 for Owen Tangavelu, 17 thousandths behind his countryman, Hadrian David, as he makes his way down towards turn number three. He's going to call it a day there as well, Owen Tangavelu. Could it be two second row starts in one weekend for him? There's Leonardo Fornaroli. He's going to give it one more go. Gabriel Portoletto's giving it one more go as well. He's giving it a good go. 21.8 through the first sector for him. Noel Leon is improving quite well. 21.9 for him. Here we see Lorenzo Fluxa in the number 16. He really needs to improve on this lap. He's all the way down in 15th. Remember, this is what row of the grid they will start on, not what position overall. We still have another whole group of drivers to go out on track once these guys come in. Check a flag waving here at the Red Bull Ring for our first group of drivers. Who's going to cross the line first? Well, Gabriel Portoletto is going to be one of the main ones. Here he comes now through the final corner. Can we see him improve? He needs to find some time through the last sector. Dirksen comes across the line in P5. Leon will be in P9. Portoletto up to the nine, stays P3. Three tenths back, unfortunately. Can't quite improve. Gabriele Mini 
in P4 currently. Is he going to be able to improve? We'll find out. He's gone a little bit slower through the first sector. Dudu Barrichello, P6. Fornaroli, P7. Marin Angeli improved up to P12. Checkered flag is waving. Sami Megatunis stays in P8. Zagazeta goes to P10. A well done to Zagazeta, a 126.8 on the last lap. Masson went up to P9 as well. He improved right at the end of the session. And Nico Baptiste also put in a personal best. But fastest lap went to Hadrian David, 126.076. What a time, that's the time now that the next group of drivers have the beat. 126.076 from Hadrian David. Tangavelu, second place. Bortoletto in third place. Gabriele Mini, fourth place, and I don't think he's best pleased with that uh, at all. I think he wanted a front row start. Here's confirmation of the result. Hadrian David, 126.076. Provisional pole position for the time being. Tangavelu once again will be on the second row. Bortoletto, a big improvement. Sixth row yesterday, third row today. Gabriele Mini will be in the top 10. Joshua Dirksen finished in there yesterday, will start in there. Barrichello will be just outside it. Fornaroli will be on row seven. Megatunif row eight. Masson row nine. Leon row 10. Wisnicki row 11. Marin Angeli row 12. Baptiste, row 13. Zagazetta dropped to row 14. So must have had his lap time deleted. And Flukser will be row 15. Braski, row 16. Henry on row 17. Ogard, row 18. 1.4 seconds between all 18 drivers. That's how close it was out there. Incredibly close. That is Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine qualifying for you. Absolutely nothing to split them, wasn't it? It looked like it was going to be Bortoletto's for a while. It looked like it was going to be Barrichello's for a while. He just dropped away towards the end of the session. Arden looked like they had one hand on that pole position, a one, two, three at one stage with Barrichello, Dirksen and Leon. But in the end, sixth, fifth, tenth uh, in that order. Hadrian David saved himself for the end of the session and then crept up to take first place and put himself on the front row of the grid with that 126.076. Tangavelu, the only man who could get anywhere near him. He's on absolute fire right now in that RPM car. Keith Donegan and his team doing an absolutely superb job down there. Now it's over to Pierre-Louis Chauvet to see what he can do. Can he make it an all RPM row two? Can he even improve on that and put an RPM car on the front row? He got an RPM car on the podium yesterday. Let's see what he can do today. He was absolutely over the moon. Loves to push to pass uh, as well. I was speaking to him uh, about that this morning. There comes Gabrielli Mini into the pit lane. You can do something from the fourth row. You're not out of the question there. Kaz Havercourt proved it's not over until it's over. 14th place on the grid for him. And he finished in first place yesterday. Josh Dufek started from 10th and finished in second place. And Pierre-Louis Chauvet held his position in third place. Right, we move on to Group A. These are the drivers, first, third, fifth, and so on in the championship competing in it. Dino Biganovic, Paul Aron, Kaz Havakul, our winner yesterday. Mary Boyer, Sebastian Montoya, Tim Tramnitz, Josh Dufek, Roman Belinsky, Lawrence Van Hopen, Maceo Capietto, Victor Bernier, Santiago Ramos, Levente Rivets, Delano Vantoff, Pietro Armani, Hamder Alcabesi, and Pierre-Louis Chauvet. As I said, there will be no Teresa Babachkova after the incident. She had uh, with Gillian Henryon uh, yesterday. The team and herself have taken the decision that it's best for her not to compete today. And we wish her uh, all the best. I really do hope we see her back racing in the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine uh, one day. Wish her all the best for the rest of the W Series season and her upcoming 
FIA Formula 3 tester, Magni Court. Right, green flag waves. Here come the Group A drivers out on circuit. Includes our championship leader, Dino Beganovic, who moved to 232 points yesterday. Gabriele Mini on 185. You have to say, Dino firmly putting, starting to put one hand on this title now. We do have two rounds to go uh, after this. Next month, we have a double header. We go to Barcelona and to Mugello. And Dino, fourth place yesterday. Drove quite sensibly. It was a, a, a quiet, a bit of a quiet race for him at times, really. I kept his head, didn't take any unnecessary risks. I think that was the, uh, the main thing for Dino. Mainly because he doesn't really need to. He knows the guys around him are the ones that have to go and beat him by some distance. And as such, Dino drove quite a, uh, a calm race, a composed race, and came through in fourth place. It's, of course, a race that involves uh, Paul Aron as well, who was leading and took the gamble to come in for slick tyres. What a race it was uh, yesterday did see Paul this morning, of course, wasn't uh, pleased with how things uh, ended yesterday, but has uh, very quickly put things behind him now and is just fully focused on, on making up for all of that today. Whoa, Josh Dufek to the right of screen is off on the grass. <laughs> now everyone's trying to, I think everyone's trying to, it takes a couple of laps to get these tyres in, so this isn't a case of everyone trying to grab a toe. It's a little bit, you know, after you, after you sort of thing. But uh, Josh Dupe getting a little bit caught out there. Fantastic day for him uh, yesterday. He's really been coming on form in uh, recent rounds. He's now up to 11th in the championship as well. And he's starting to come into the fight for the rookie title as well. He's only five points uh, back now from Sebastian Montoya. 20 points back from Leonardo Fornaroli. So if Josh Dufek has a race like he did yesterday, then you'd have to say he could be a huge contender for the rookie title going into the last two rounds. Do not count out that man. It just shows what a huge run of confidence can do for a driver. A fifth place, a sixth place, a, tenth place, a couple of tenth places, and a podium. It's been his run of form in the last three rounds. Hugely impressive stuff from Dufek. And he carries around that confidence with him around the paddock. There's his teammate, though, Kaz Havacourt, leading the train. And that's another sign of a driver. Definitely confident, someone who's uh, happy to lead the queue. There's Sebastian Montoya. Another driver who gambled for the slick tyres yesterday. We had a downpour at the start of the race, essentially. Uh, but it went away as quickly, the rain stopped as quickly as it came, and uh, with uh, the, the, I mean, the conditions changed here so, so quickly, the sun was back out and the rain was just evaporating off the circuit so quickly uh, that uh, some drivers felt that in a 30 minutes plus a lap race that uh, there was going to be enough time for the circuit to dry up, get on the slick tyres and make up all that time back and a lot more. Sebastian Montoya was amongst the drivers who gambled for the slick tyres. Didn't quite pay off for him. He did get through to 10th place. We did have a safety car for a few laps. He did get through to 10th, but he did get uh, that penalty. Unfortunately, there's Tim Tramnitz. Not the best of days for him. Yesterday, we didn't really get a chance to see what he could do. An incident on the restart for him, uh, sadly. That's uh, what happened to Tim Tramnitz as uh, the restart got going uh, and everyone got congested. Tim Tramnitz, uh, fortunately, had someone go into the back of him and uh, uh, that is why Tim Tramnitz went tumbling down the order. So uh, let's see what he can do today. He's a driver that's had quite a lot of misfortune this season, but he's always kept his head held high during it. There's uh, Hamda Al-Kabasi. She's been in good form in qualifying recently. 
She matched her best qualifying result of the season yesterday. And there's a man who matched his best result of this season yesterday, Lawrence Van Hopen. An eighth place for him yesterday. Solid results. That matches the best results that he got at Monaco, where he took two rookie wins. Let's see if he can match that again today. We are warming up. This is the warming up phase. There's Mary Boyer. For those of you who may have not watched the championship for a little while, different colours for him now, driving with the MP Motorsport team. Got himself a point yesterday, did Mary Boyer. Can be pleased with that. He was uh, able to uh, pick up the points came through from 23rd on the grid as well, so it was a really impressive drive, I have to say, from Mary Boyer, maybe one that wasn't mentioned enough, but uh, a well done to Mary Boyer for getting that 10th place finish. We're yet to really see anywhere near the time, 126.076, so to remind you, this group, it's all about trying to beat now that time of Hadrian David. If they do, the person quickest in this group will start on pole position, and everyone else in this group will form up on the inside row of the grid behind them. Here's Delano Vantoff leading us up towards turn number one. Second race back after his operation that he had off the back of Monaco. He's been out of the car for a long time since then, so still finding his feet again is Delano Vantoff. Got to get back to full fitness in terms of being in the car, Delano Vanhoff. And that'll come, no doubt, a Spanish F4 champion last year, did that incredibly convincingly as well. Very talented driver. He's got the capabilities of fighting towards the front of this championship. Just waiting for his breakthrough weekend. Will this be the day that that happens? Let's find out. Delano Vanhoff makes his way through turn six and seven. Looks like he's going to lay down the marker for everyone else to beat as he comes up towards the final two corners. Seven minutes to go then. Delano Vanhoff is going to put the marker down. And he stays within track limits as he comes through the penultimate corner and again through the final corner. Up towards the start finish line then. What does Delano Vanhoff do for us? 127. 0.231, that's a pretty decent time, a pretty decent first flying lap for Delano Van Hoff, and that looked, oh, that was very close for Tim Tramnitz. We have sensors and cameras out there, so if it was out of track limits, it would have been spotted. Dino Boganovic goes quickest, 126.930 for Dino Boganovic. Delano Van Hoff is second, Paul on his third, Tramnitz is fourth, Van Hopen is fifth, then it's Sebastian Montoya, Boyer, Pierre-Louis Chauvet has gone up to fourth place. Bernier is ninth, Belinsky is next, and it's Rivets, Havercourt, Ramos, Alcabesi, Devec, Capietto, and Armani. Wonderful to see better qualifying performances today from Van Amersport because they absolutely nailed the setup for the race. A qualifying, it didn't quite work out for them. Now they've got all that confidence off the back. Uh, of the race yesterday. I wonder if we'll see them a little bit further towards the front of the grid this time. Dino Beganovic, as I said, leading the championship comfortably. Everyone has to beat him. Maceo Capietto is in the pit lane, by the way. Not too sure what's gone on there. Hopefully we see him back out and able to set a couple more laps because he's down in 16th place currently. Pierre-Louis Chauvet is quickest through the first sector as well. One to watch, Dino Beganovic making his way up towards the final two corners in a battle here with Paul Laron as Delano Vantoff, 126.9, goes second quickest and sets the quickest last sector we've seen so far at this session. Paul Laron up towards the line, goes quickest, 126.7 as Beganovic can't beat it, 126.775. So Paul Laron currently quickest, just like he was yesterday. However, they have to find seven tenths of a second. Tim Tramnitz is up to third, but only briefly. 
Pierre-Louis Chauvet now goes to third place. Montoya is fifth, then it's Van Toff, Bernier, Belinsky, Van Hopen, Habercourt, Rivets, Alcabesi, Boyer, Ramos, Arma. Whoa, as uh, Aaron goes wide there. Boyer up to 13th place. Victor Bernier, good time from him. He did the best last sector that we've seen. And now Victor Bernier is flying out there. He's just done the quickest first sector of this session so far. The Frenchman, Victor Bernier, on an absolute charge here. I wonder if we'll see him getting towards the front of the order. Victor Bernier made so many places in the first race at Spa. 16 places he gained there. Let's see if Victor Bernier can make similar progress in terms of qualifying here. Currently running in seventh place. Here we watch Dino Biganovic, though, trying to uh, chase down Paul Aron. We'll pick up Paul Aron first as he makes his way downhill through nine. He's hunting town Kaz Havakur. Now we pick up Dino Biganovic. What can Kaz Havakur do? He currently sits in 10th place. He comes up to the line. He goes to P6. Paul Aron goes P1. 126.6. Biganovic beats it. 126.424. Provisional pole there for Biganovic. Tim Tramnitz goes third place. Top rookie in the session. Van Hopen goes up to fifth place. Great time there for Lawrence Van Hopen. Victor Bernier, P9. He lost a lot of time, lost a whole second through the second sector. Had he not done that, he probably would have been on pole position. Victor Bernier lost time through the second sector. Dino Biganovic lost time potentially through the first sector. In fact, that was on the edge, wasn't it, through the first sector. You can see they've got to run on that sausage curb. Dino Biganovic there doing an absolutely brilliant job. Pierre-Louis Chauvet, though, he's doing a good job as well. He's just gone quickest through the first sector in the number 55 RPM car. We've already seen an RPM car go second in the first group. Pierre-Louis Chauvet. Can he match that or even better it? Let's find out. He's up against two of the Prima cars. There's one of them, Dino Biganovic, who's backed off on this lap. Kaz Havakor is doing the same. He wants to try and grab a toe. Delano Vanhoff goes P5. Great stuff here from Delano Vanhoff. This would be his best qualifying performance if he could stay there. Lawrence Van Hopen is P6 and looks like he could improve. Sebastian Montoya looks set to potentially improve as well, as does Victor Bernier, as does Roman Belinsky, as does Josh Dufek. We're going to see lots of changes on this lap. Victor Bernier, P3. There we go. Victor Bernier up to P3. Josh Dufek goes P2. 126.531 for Josh Dufek. Just like where he finished yesterday, Josh Dufek right at the front of the field. There's Tim Tramnitz in the 70, chasing down Dino Beganovic. Now down in sixth place after backing off on the last lap. Pierre-Louis Chauvet goes up to fourth place. Looks like we had a, a lap time deleted there for Victor Bernier, unfortunately. So he drops back down to 12th place. So he goes from row three down to row 12. Has a lot of work to do now in this last minute and 10 seconds. Dufek is flying. Dufek absolutely flying, 21.7. That's the quickest first sector we've seen so far. They still have to find four tenths of a second to beat Hadrian David. They're going to get one more lap at the end of this. We're into the final minute of the session. Dino Biganovic setting himself up for one more lap, potentially. Josh Dufek has backed off on this lap. He's lost seven tenths through the second sector. Either that or he's made a mistake. Dino Biganovic is going to get one more shot at this. Holding on to pole, it's down to the others to beat him. Currently, he'll start from P2. As he comes across the line, he improves, but only slightly. 126.401. Dufek is second, Aaron is third, Tim Tramnitz is fourth, Chauvet is next, and it's Vantoff, Belinsky, Van Hopen, Montoya, as they make their way now up the hill. Chauvet goes to third place there, an improvement from Pierre-Louis Chauvet. He's at the end of this queue in the green and orange colours there for RPM. Here he comes, he's got a good toe here from Lawrence Van Hopen on this lap. Are we going to see any improvements from him? Roman Belinsky has gone up to P6 as well. Good improvements from him. Checkered flag is waving. Right, this is it. This is their last opportunities to improve. And Josh Dufek is challenging for pole position. After finishing second yesterday, he's trying to get himself onto the front row of the grid today. 
I'm not quite sure if they're going to beat the time of Hadri and David, but still, whoever is quickest in this group will start at least from P2. Through the turn six and seven we go. Ahead of this is Victor Bernier. Here is Josh Dufek across the line. Delano Vantoff goes up to P4. Vantoff is into the top ten. He'll start from row four. Are we going to see any more improvements? Here comes Victor Bernier in the blue downhill, followed by Josh Dufek. Josh Dufek looks like he could take the quickest time away from Dino Beganovic, and Chauvet has gone wide. His lap time will be deleted. Tramnitz, fifth place for him. Are we going to see any improvements from Dufek? Up to the line he goes. No, two tenths back. What about Chauvet? He can't improve either. Unfortunately, no improvements from Victor Bernier as well. Ran wide through turn six, and that meant he did not improve. Dino Beganovic came into the pits. He didn't even need to do the final lap. So Dino Beganovic goes quickest, and he will start from the outside of the front row. He will start alongside Hadrian David on the front row of the grid. Josh Dufek, after finishing second yesterday, getting his first podium and first rookie win. He will start from row number two, and Pierre-Louis Chauvet will start from row number three. Delano Vanthoff, his best ever qualifying in the championship, row four, and Tim Tramnitz puts himself into the top ten. Paul Laron starts just outside it. He's given himself some work to do. Belinsky will be row seven, Van Hopen row eight, Boyer row nine, Montoya will be row 10. Havercourt in row 11, but remember what he did yesterday. He's got a lot of work to do from there, though. Bernier row 12, but it's a session of what could have been for him. Had that lap time deleted when he went up to P3. Rivets row 13. Armani row 14. Ramos row 15. Alcabasi row 16. Capietto came into the pit lane with problems, and sadly, he will start from the very back of the grid. Well, there is Tim Tramnitz coming in. Top 10 for him, he'll start from 10th place. Montoya will start from P20. He'll be disappointed with that one, given Josh Dufek is going to start from 4th place. And remember, Josh Dufek is now only 20 points back from Leonardo Fornaroli in terms of the race for the rookie title. He's only five points behind Sebastian Montoya. So Sebastian Montoya could, he lost the rookie lead not long ago. He could lose second place in the rookie standings today. Josh Dufek could be on the hunt for the overall rookie lead. Dino Biganovic, though, looking to uh, further extend his lead in the championship. He'll start from P2. Josh Dufek will start from the outside of row two. Chauvet will start from sixth. Delano Van Hoff, eighth. Tim Tramnitz will round out the top 10. Aaron will have some work to do from 12th. He'll be an exciting watch, no doubt. Belinsky will start from 14th place. Then it'll be Van Hopen in 16th. Boyer in 18th. Montoya will round out the top 20. Havercourt will be in 22nd place, yesterday's winner. Bernier down in 24th. Rivets will be in 26th. Armani in 28th. Ramos will round out the top 30 when we go racing later. Alcabasi down in 32nd, uh, and Capietto will be down in 34th place. Of course, we already had our first group go out, Group B, Group A, uh, that was. Right, the race is coming up later, 2.30 local time here in Austria. Make sure you join us for what should be a fun.